Okay, we're starting off the third lecture for chapter 21, 22, and we'll look at a couple different types of treating sewage disposal. That sounds exciting. Uh, the first uh, scenario we'll look at here is an on-site sewage disposal system in which you're utilizing a septic tank and a septic field. So in a septic tank, you got these three layers here. Forget about the gas. You have a sludge layer, a uh, middle layer, and then a scum layer, which is like your soaps and oils and such, which will float. Um, this is a primary type uh, treatment system over here in which you're separating materials and bacteria are working on breaking down some of the organic material and then you get this sludge. Occasionally, every three to five years, you gotta pump this stuff out because it's gonna eventually build up and then ultimately it would end up going out into your field. The other type of uh, part of the system is the drain field. And out there you have mostly clear liquid going out there. It still has lots of bacteria and such in it. And the water will go out and then go into a crushed gravel bed. And underneath the gravel, you're gonna have some sand. We'll see a picture of this again later on. As long as the system has um, access to air just through the soil itself, maybe you have a vent pipe in there somewhere, uh, the system works fine. But as far as treatment goes, you know, the primary treatment is going to remove a lot of the physical materials, the solids, but then ultimately you're also going to have secondary treatment, which happens both in the tank and in the field. And in that process, you're removing a lot of the bacteria and then some of the organic materials, organic compounds, are also breaking down into less harmful materials. So here's another little slide of what the drain field looks like after it has failed. You can see you have your drain tile line sitting here and your gravel below it with the sand below it. And then you have this organic matter, which is um, the system has gone anaerobic, which means it's no longer breathing. And then eventually it's going to seal off and fail. So again, all systems eventually do this. Uh, this one already did it. So again, just kind of going over the processes Primary sewage treatment is a physical process in which you're removing solids from the system. And then you have the secondary portion in which it is biological, in which you're breaking down this organic material through an, an aerobic process. Uh, as far as cities go, uh, let's look at a municipal system. So here we have it. Um, these are huge, huge systems. I believe Detroit has one of the larger ones in the country. But you can see, you know, one way or another, your sewage is transported over to the city of Detroit, in which it goes under a primary treatment system in which you're settling out materials, and you go through an aeration system over here, is which you're trying to, again, bring in oxygen to give a secondary treatment to the materials. Um, and again, that's the, the difference between the two. We're in a um, home situation. You have secondary treatment going on in both the tank and the field, we're here in a municipal system, you have uh, primarily very separate systems. But you can kind of just read through and look at all the different types of uh, treatments that are within the system to see how it kind of uh, goes about trying to treat it. We're gonna look at a couple of additions to this as well in just a moment. Uh, okay, um, actually let me back up and just to make sure that we do cover it. Uh, two different parts of the system. One would be called advanced. So you can write that out here. Advanced part of the system is where they uh, put a treatment in which will chemically remove certain parts of the system. You could have like nitrates or sulfates that they don't want being discharged into the waterway. So chemically they can remove some other parts of pollutants. And then you would, might also have a disinfection part of the system in which you're actually trying to kill off any remaining bacteria before it goes out into the waterway. These typically aren't required by law. Typically it's only primary and secondary. Okay. Going back to this nice little slide here, uh, this actually is a picture of the Rouge. Once upon a time, we used to have these things called CSOs, Combined Sewer Overflows, and it was the lesser of two evils. We had a choice. We could flood our basements with sewage whenever we had a really heavy rain and the system was overloaded, or we could discharge our waste into the Rouge River. So that was a lot easier to do, and it was obviously uh, incredibly disgusting. 
we had all this waste going on to the river and well that was the way it was for a long time they've made a lot of corrections to the system one is they've tried to remove downspouts from storm sewers so it wasn't overloading the system with rainwater they've tried to separate the CSOs so you aren't having rainwater going into treatment systems anyways and two they built these incredibly large tanks that were able to hold this rainwater during heavy rain periods and therefore these that wasn't going on to rivers and they held it long enough and then eventually once the rainwaters went down they could take this water and ship it back out over to Detroit for treatment okay Uh, this is something that happens a lot with like C um, CAFOs, um, concentrated animal feed organizations. I think I think that's what the O stands for. Um, but you get these lagoons, these waste lagoons, and they're supposed to be lined um, to prevent that material from going down into the groundwater. But it's just another way of trying to settle out this material. And you know, it's bottom line, it's it's just disgusting. Um, but this is one of the prices we pay for um, a lot of the, the meats that we like to eat. So again, this is just going through that process as far as how we can um, treat our waste. And you can look through there. All you can just go ahead and pause it and take a look at it as much as you like. But again, just notice the differences between primary and secondary and all these different parts in there. Okay, I guess I did mention this earlier. Um, we had that advanced part of the system in which you're treating some other parts of the pollutants. Usually it's like you know phosphates or nitrates that you're trying to remove from the sewage. And then you have this dechlorination process, excuse me, chlorination process in which you're trying to remove or kill off any of their bacteria, viruses and such that still could be in there. Okay, moving on. This is interesting. Uh, we actually happen to buy this stuff for our lawns. Um, it's it's fertilizer, and it actually comes kind of gross from sewage. But hey, it's it's kind of like recycling. Uh, the nice thing about it is it does provide some of the nutrients at a much lower concentration, six, two, and zero, which is compared to a lot of times you're putting something that's either somewhere around twenty or thirty. Um, and I can't remember the exact numbers. I want to say it's, I want to say it's like nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. So I want to say it's NKP, I think. But in any case, those are some of the nutrients you have going out there. So it's another alternative you have as far as if you are going to put something in your lawn. The nice thing about it is it doesn't have a lot of these pesticides or herbicides that we use, uh, which aren't necessarily good for anybody. Okay, so reducing pollution through sewage treatments, and this is one way of treating some sewage. I don't know how well this would work for, you know, a lot of towns that have a lot more people in it, but they actually created this wetlands that was actually treating the sewage and not using a traditional plant. So it's kind of like a return to nature viewpoint here. So they say they're suggesting that it costs less than a traditional plant and uh, it's 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 kind of natural all right so uh, similar thing as far as you know ways to reduce pollution but it certainly isn't a perfect system you, there's a lot of arguments going back and forth and I'm sure it's in the courts quite a bit but uh, again some people say that you know the Clean Water Act needs to be uh, stronger and we need to be focusing more on preventing these problems from happening instead of prosecuting and fixing problems after they've happened uh, but then again you have people on the other side whoever you want to you know say farmers or developers whoever you like that just don't like government getting in the way of what they want to do with their property uh, they say it's my property I can do it I want um, but I can say you know f you know from being a previous regulator it's your property today, but you can certainly sell it, and now it's somebody else's problem. So we all kind of are stewards of the property of the land, and we have to do what's best for everybody. Okay, good place to end for number three, and we'll start up number four right after this.